Good afternoon. This is Dr. Holt. I want to talk about cars on a track where the track is, has an incline. Initially, I'm going to start out where there's no friction and then slowly add friction, and you can see how the forces change. Here I have a mass of the car, 2,400 kilograms. It's going around a round track, has a radius of 180 meters and an angle of 25 degrees. We'll, we will initially have it where the car is not moving. And this goes back to what we've done earlier. We would be we would draw our mass times gravity coming down. We always usually break this into components like this and like this. This would be our norm rate coming back up here. And then we would I'll just highlight these here. These would be the two components. Like that. This would be labeled as force normal. Again, this would be 2400 times 9.8, which will give us a value of 23,520 newtons here. If this angle is 25 degrees, this angle here would be 25 degrees. This component here would equal to 23,520 times the cosine of 25 degrees. This component here of 23,520 times the sine of 25 degrees. Okay, this is how we do problems where we have no um, no velocity or we're not going around track. In this case, we find the acceleration of this object by taking this value here divided by the 2400 kilograms and we get to determine what the acceleration of the car down the ramp would be. However, here this is going to change somewhat in that now we're going to find out what this normal can do, what, can, what the horizontal component of this normal can do that can allow me to create the maximum velocity around this track to hold this car in position. All right, to do that, we're going to adjust our free body diagram slightly and we're going to draw a little bit different. We're going to come down here. Again, we're going to label this as our 23,520 Newton force coming down here. Now here we're going to have our normal going back up like this and now off to our side is we're going to make this into the mass of the car 2400 times the centripetal acceleration because if we're going down if we're going around a track we have an acceleration back toward the center because our tangential velocity even though the magnitude is the same is changing directions constantly as we move around the track. So we have an acceleration pointing back to the center. So this would be our F normal. And again, if this angle is going to be 25 degrees, then this angle here will also, we'll do that in red, will also be 25 degrees. Okay, so that's what the free body diagram would look like, and I'm including the mass times acceleration off to the side. Okay, so what we can do here is we can say the summation of forces in the x direction must equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction and this acceleration is going to be the centripetal. I'm going to let anything that goes to the left here be positive. You can make it negative if you want. It makes no difference whatsoever in the world. So when I do that, I will get my force normal times the sine of 25 degrees degrees. That's what it's going to do. It's going to give me the horizontal component of this normal and that must be equal to the mass of the car 2400 times the centripetal acceleration. All right. Now we, we know a few things. We know, I'm going to rewrite this, force normal times the sine of 25 is equal to 2400 times velocity squared divided by the radius and we were given the radius in this problem as 180 meters. All right, so now we have this equation. It's a good equation, but the problem is we have two unknowns. We will go back to our other equation. We can say the summation of forces in the y direction must equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. But we know this car is not going to accelerate up or down in the track. So we will make the acceleration here go to zero, which means this whole thing is going to equal to zero. So now I do force normal. So 
by here times the cosine of 25. must equal to 23,520 newtons. I have one equation, one unknown here, so I can solve. So F normal is going to equal to 23,520 divided by the cosine of 25 degrees. And I'll run that number real quickly. And I get 23,520 divided by the cosine of 25 degrees. And that is giving me a value of 25,951.45 newtons. Okay, well now I'm going to take that value there. I'm going to put it back into this equation here. I can say 25,951.45 times the sine of 25 degrees must equal to 2,400 velocity squared divided by 180. We'll rearrange this equation as 25,951.45 times the sine of 25 degrees times 180. We'll divide that by 2400. We will take the square root of that value right there and that will give us our, my velocity. And I really shouldn't say max, I should just say that, that's, a, that's, a, that's the velocity you could go. Okay. Run that number real quick. And that's going to give me about a velocity of 28.68 meters per second. Okay, so now let's think about what would happen if you end up slowing down. So now let's say if you had a velocity of, say, you dropped it down to 25 meters per second. Well, what would happen would be your normal force now cannot change because your normal force has to take on this force the vertical component of this and the angle cannot change. So what would happen is if you reduce the velocity here, then your car would would actually, the force would be forced down the track slightly. As you did, it would reach another equilibrium point, but your radius of your tr would actually be decreasing. If you increase the velocity to say 30 meters a second, now at this point, you would have no longer have enough um, horizontal component of Fn to contain that much velocity. So what would happen in that case would be the car would move up the track, which would increase the radius, which would bring everything back into equilibrium. So that's what happens when there's no friction involved. Meaning that you that you to hold a constant velocity you can only be one speci specific point on the track when there's no friction applied. By decreasing the velocity, you work your way down. By increasing the velocity, you work your way back up to be in equilibrium. Okay, so now I've changed the problem a little bit. Um, I've added friction into the problem, and I have the coefficient of static friction as 0 0.30, the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.25. And um, we want again to go back and find out what the maximum velocities can be for this car to go around this track. Now you're going to be dealing with static coefficient. You're not going to be dealing with kinetic coefficient because you're not taking into consideration when this car is sliding up and down the track. Okay? If the car is going around the track, static friction is going to be along here and along this tire here. Now this changes the problem quite a bit. What you want to do on a problem like this is you want to decide what direction you want friction to go because Friction is either going to go this way or this way, and it could fall in between. It could be it could be either this value or this value, or it also could reach zero, as we did previously. So with this, we'll go ahead and work it both ways. So I will start out with friction being right here. 
So now I know that this value here is going to equal to F friction. I'll just make it F friction like that. All right. And again, if this is 25 degrees, this angle here will be 25 degrees. Okay. And if you want to, you can put friction as normal times the, the uh, point uh, three up. All right. Now let's work the problem again. We go back and we just say the summation of forces in the y. Again, I'm just going to set it equal to zero. It's equal to mass times acceleration, but acceleration is going to be zero in the y direction. Set it equal to zero. To do that now, I will do F normal times the cosine of 25 degrees minus 23,520. Oops, 520. Now here you have to consider friction also because it has a vertical component. Minus friction, and we'll just call that friction or S, S or FS meaning static friction, times the sine of 25 degrees is equal to zero. Now this is where I'm going to substitute back in as the normal times 0.3. Take this out and I'll put 0.30 times F normal. All right, so I have this equation right here. And right now I can go ahead and find out what my normal value is going to be. And again, the only reason that I'm including this value is I'm letting it reach the max. That doesn't have to be the case if, if for example, you get a problem where you have a velocity and you're trying to find the frictional force. Frictional force does not have to be the maximum values. It can, it can vary between the negative max value going back the other way and the max value going this way. So it could, it could range between those two values and then go all the way down to zero. So somewhere in between that range. Okay, so I'll run the problem here. I will get F normal cosine of 25 minus 0.30 F normal sine 25 degrees is equal to 23,520. We'll pull out greatest common factor, which is F normal. That will give us cosine of 25 minus 0.30 sine of 25 is equal to 23,520. We'll solve for Fn here. Fn will equal to 23,520 divided by, in parentheses, the cosine of 25 minus 0 0.30 sine of 25. We'll get a calculator. We'll solve that very quickly. And value of 30,172.32 newtons. And now at this point, we just go back and we say the summation of forces in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction, where acceleration in the x direction is going to be our centripetal acceleration. We put this value in here, 30,172.32. It's basically I'm taking this value of my normal. I'm going to multiply it by the sine of 25 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to add it to my frictional force, which is going to be the normal force, times the coefficient of static friction, times the cosine of 25 degrees. We're going to set that equal to the mass of the car, which is 2400, times velocity squared, and we're going to divide that by the radius, 180. Solve for V here, and when we do that, V we will get 39 0.64 meters per second and that's our max velocity we can get at going at that radius when friction is present. Now friction is helping us in this case to go this maximum velocity because it's pointing down. Now let's clone this problem 
Now we're going to go back and what we're going to do now, we're going to change it and we're going to slow our velocity down. So what we're going to do, we're going to let the friction go back the other way. We're going to take this friction and now it's going to go back this way here. So we're going to reverse this. And now the 25 degree would, all, would be in this angle too. So now what we would end up doing is we just need to go back through here and change some of our signs here. So we'll go back to the problem. So now friction is going to go up here and go up here and up here because the, when we sum the values in the y direction, so that gives us a value here. Now that's going to change our normal force because we're letting friction go back the other way. So now when we run that number, we will get 20, oops, sorry. We will get 22,766. 0.58 newtons here. Again, you're, you've got to be careful here because you've got to change these signs because now again you're letting friction go back the other way. So we take these values out here, we take these values out here, and erase this because this is no longer going to be valid here. Alright, we're going to go ahead and start putting in the values of 22,766 0.58 here. Now friction is going back the other way. That's why we're making this one be minus. Let me clear this up a little bit. Minus 22,766.58 here. Oops, sorry about that. 0.58 here. And you can see that because the horizontal component of this is going back the other way. I'm letting this direction be positive, so this would be negative, and this would be positive. We're going to set that again times mass times acceleration. And when we do that, our velocity now is going to be 6.04 meters per second. All right. So what we've determined is our velocity has got to be greater than or equal to 16.04 meters per second and it has to be less than or equal to what would we say our other value was of 39.64 okay that's what our velocity range would be I can go anywhere between those and, and travel down at, at that radius anywhere with these velocity I'm gonna be fine I'm not gonna I can I can maintain that radius because the frictional force is going to constantly change as I adjust my velocity. Now again, if I want my frictional force to be zero, we go back to the very beginning, and all I have to do to do that is go 28.68 meters per second, and I'll write that down on the problem here. So when velocity is equal to 28.68 meters per second, my static friction here would go to zero because everything would be in equilibrium. All right, so that's how you set up cars on a ramp. Um, again, you're going to get variation in the velocities because the frictional, uh, static friction is not constant. All right, so again, good free by diagrams and it makes all the difference in the world. Best of luck.